Hey macro fans, I have fantastic news for you because I have just bought the 25mm 2.5x to 5x macro lens. This is an ultra macro lens, so this is actually more like a microscope. This is the most crazy lens I've ever used since I got the probe. And the second big news is that Laura has sent me a top secret macro lens which will be revealed in the next month. And now let's take a closer look on this microscope. The unboxing was not too exciting, solid packaging, that's it. What is interesting is how this lens here is built. It goes from 2.5 to 5x without any focusing options. That means that we can only use it with extremely short focusing distances. You really need a lot of force to change the magnification, which for me definitely is a plus so that when you stack, for example, the magnification is fixed. It does come with this protection cap, which is pretty tight, which I like. The build quality feels really good. It is completely made of metal. When you think of getting a lens like this, you really should keep in mind that it starts at 2.5. That means you can only do extreme macro and micro photography and it cannot be used for anything else. The aperture goes from 2.8 to f16, which is actually kind of funny because at f2.8, the field of depth is zero. Even at f8, it is almost zero, but that's probably just how those lenses are built. It got hard clickable f-stops, which I personally do like. Shooting video handheld, probably impossible. Shooting fast moving objects, impossible. Probably the most important question about this lens is, is it sharp? Especially when stopping down. So I really hope that the sharpness will not be too bad at f8, f11. So that's the first thing we're gonna focus on. Therefore, I took some test shots at 2.5 magnification and 5 magnification on all available available apertures. Okay, the images are taken and now I'm just super excited to see how the aperture is affecting the quality of the image taken by the 25. We're gonna start with the images taken at 2.5 magnification. We're gonna take a closer look at 100%. It is actually pretty interesting that there are like some bubbles in the structure of the button of the remote I took the images of. Let's switch from 2.8 to f4. The result is a lot better. At f8 the image actually became pretty soft and I think it's getting worse when going down to f11. Oh yeah. F16 actually looks really bad. The best image quality you'll get is between F4 and 5.6, which is kind of an issue when you think of the field of that. Let's check the image quality at 5x magnification. Okay, let's go to 100% and yeah, the magnification is just, it's incredible. There is a little bit of chromatic aberration at 2.8, which gets hopefully a little better when stopping down. At a fall, the chromatic aberration has almost completely vanished. The sharpness gets a little better. Yeah, same here. At f8, the sharpness dramatically drops. So when we want to crop afterwards, there is like 5.6 as limitation, but when we remember that we're using a microscope and not an ordinary lens, this behavior is really normal. 5.6 is perfect, f8 is okay above that, the image quality is just not usable anymore. So it is time to test this lens in the real world. It will be extremely challenging now that we know that we have to use an aperture of 5.6 at 5x magnification. As additional gear, I'm gonna use this video light for illumination and also the slider and the tripod with my full frame camera. As the wild bees in my garden are pretty busy at the moment, this might be the perfect subject to test the lens. Let's do it. The wild bees as an object was a good idea. Actually, not really. The bee is actually too big for the magnification of this lens. The bee is moving too fast. It is just not fun. Not even with the slider, there's just no chance to get a sharp image. I could take some okay video footage, but yeah, we have to look for a static object. Handheld video also is just almost impossible. 
Then I've discovered a stink bug which sat on a branch which seemed to be the perfect subject because it did not move at all. I could get very, very close with my lens. Remember, the focus distance is just four centimeters and it did not care at all. But this lightly wood made it almost impossible to get a sharp image because I would have to use extremely short shutter speeds. And as I did not use a flash for the first test, the ISO was like 6,400. And the solution was actually pretty simple. I just took the branch with the leaf with the stink bug and brought it into my home, put it onto a stable position, prepared my tripod to get a high detail image of the compound eye. And with some additional lighting coming from the video light, which was actually kind of weak compared to the flash, I could get some pretty remarkable results. So this is really not an easy lens, especially not for starting macro photography. And it is very, very challenging to use it in the real world, especially when we don't have proper lighting. As I've just used the video light and the sunlight, the results were pretty average. So we have to work out a solution to use it proper with a flash. Normally I'm using the Pope shield, which cannot be used with this setup. The flash diffuser is just usable for longer focusing distance. I've already ordered another solution and that is the official ring light of Laura. I have not used it yet, but I think this might be a waste of money and I have to go with a flash, flash diffuser version. Is there anything specific you need to know about this lens? For example, I could make a follow-up video using focus stacking, but I think I'm gonna first focus on the flash, flash diffuser solution. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, have a good day and hopefully see you in the next.